Good morning from Africa. Welcome to the new video. It's a beautiful day. As usual, all the days here are so pretty. Sun is shining. These trees are flowering. White flowers and red flowers. Just so beautiful. Here in the veggie patch, Scott started preparing the beds. Look at that, it's beautiful. And then soon we're gonna start planting. Started today with some yoga, some meditation and journaling. We usually like to start with that. And now I'm gonna make a pie. <laughs> pie with... Uh, some peaches. I found the recipe in my phone yesterday that I screenshotted from the book of I think this is a very known book. It's something like Under the Tuscan Sun and this one is a different like a third third series of this book. So I found this recipe for a pie and it's like a pie that you make in hot condition. So I wanted to make it yesterday but it was already quite light and you have to let the dough in the fridge for two hours. So I prepared the dough yesterday and today I'm just gonna put it in the pie pan and uh, prepare the filling. So I'll take you with to do that and then I'll bake it and then I want to go to the Wi-Fi because we don't have actually internet here. And also there's a electricity schedule that I can explain a bit later. So here we don't have Wi-Fi because we don't want to at the moment. And there's Wi-Fi like in a neighbor's house 20 minutes from here. So I have some messages to send and I always try to organize myself so that I have for Instagram and YouTube so I organized that really well so that I can just go to the internet spend minimum time there and Get everything done and then come back here And so it's like a 20 minute walk well, if we drive by car So it's five minutes, but at the moment the car is still not working. We wanted to go to town to Tabazimbi to buy some things, but yeah, the, that's still on hold, this car situation, so. And about the electricity schedule here in South Africa, it's like a global thing, it's for the whole country. There's a load shedding application that you download to your phone, and you have slots for when the electricity will not be working. Maybe I'll add a picture here of how this looks. So for every day, I don't check it that regularly because it's not like we really need electricity here. We use gas and yeah, the lights are electricity, but during the day it's fine and you just have to uh, be aware of charging your things ahead and stuff like that. Or just you just leave it plugged in and it charges itself whenever the electricity is back and we have uh, usually we work outside so it doesn't matter that much yeah when we were working on this path last year and using concrete and a concrete mixer it was quite funny because you have to plan when the concrete mixer will be working but other than that, this is uh, like you don't really need that much electricity. Like for example, in the cities, you need more. So yeah, so there's a low shedding app, and for every day there are some slots when there's no electricity, and rest of the time there is electricity. So for example, today it's from 11 to 1:30, I think. There's no electricity. So I want to get uh, to the internet before because if we go to the internet we also need to make sure that there's electricity. So this is sometimes hard for me to explain to 
people when I arrange when we, or when we talk about when we're gonna call so I need to plan a bit more <laughs> before I can do that but yeah for me it's it's fine we chose this so I'm quite happy and it's very nice not to be always connected and be more connected with yourself so yeah today I just was starting to get back into yoga because for like a month I got out of it it was just too much going on with the move here and with everything so I took a little break and then now I can feel that my body really needs to get back into that and so maybe one day I'll film a session but at the moment it's really just stretching and just starting again oh, I'm sure you know if you're into yoga that how this works that you really need to get back into it slowly so I took it easy yesterday and today but yeah today it was way better and I already feel better after moving my body a bit <coughs> and yeah so when I get a bit better and get it back into the routine then maybe I can film a session but I just usually improvise of what my body needs at the moment and so yeah so now I'm going to show you another recipe of this interesting peach pie oh look at these flowers it's been like three days since they started flowering so I got this pan I have this dough I made yesterday and I put it in this foil and left it in the fridge overnight and I'm gonna read you what's in it so uh, there's one cup of flour I used a cup like this and I combined flour flowers coconut flour gluten-free flour and regular flour so I just Put it together then there's one spoon of white sugar one fourth of a small spoon of salt half cup of unsalted butter mine was salted so I put less salt very cold you have to have it very cold and you chop it into pieces and then one fourth of, of a cup of cold water and you should add even ice so that was very interesting and it worked you combine it in a bowl and you start putting water and that's it for this one so now I'm gonna try to roll this a bit and then I'll put it in the pan and spread it with my hands. I think that will be a bit better. All right, that looks very nice. And now for the filling. Five to six um, peaches. I got these nectarines. I got four. <clears throat> so I decided I'm gonna add two bananas. These are ready to use then one spoon of butter half cup of white sugar and half cup of brown sugar spoon of cinnamon one spoon of flour one spoon of butter Two 
20 minutes 200 degrees and after 20 minutes you should put it to 190 and remove the tin foil aluminium foil and uh, see if it's turning brown and bake for another 10 minutes hello Walking, taking a shortcut. <laughs> because I wanted to show the way to the Wi Fi, but this will look like a hike. <laughs> so you can also take a road that's not this tactical, I would say. <laughs> This is not the usual way to the Wi-Fi I would take, but it's a more interesting way. <laughs> This is the way, back from the Wi-Fi, this is the normal way. The road, very nice. Walking back, Scott had to run back because he forgot his backpack, so on my own now. But I know this path pretty well, so it's good. And it's so hot, so sunny. But actually, really nice. Look at this amazingness. Everything is so green and beautiful. So excited to taste this pie that I made in the morning like brunch, breakfast slash brunch time. I think it should be around nine. Not sure. Ooh. This is the area where the animals have water. So they come here to drink. few more minutes. Almost there. You can see the pool. We're gonna try to fix that. It's a dam actually. And yeah, on the other side of that is uh, our house. I'm back. I'm back here. Oh, look at the bucky. Sad. Not starting now. Oh, look at this beautiful oasis. Oh, look at the house. So nice. Oh, oh, oh wow, the flowers opened since this morning. So this is the result. Hi. Oh, it looks so good. Hello.
she had a party for the baby. Rally, a bit across this home, and also for the family of the elephants are growing up in the wild. And they sort of bring big elephants as the National Parks Board are delivered to two young orphans from the operation. And they obviously are too young to be on their own or to be released on the property. Instead, that they were kept in stables, uh, some like a horses, and a keeper was appointed to look. So beautiful. Once again, welcome to Vegas Elephants, and thank you all for making it. And my colleague is Edward. Hello, everyone. Hi, Hello. Hello. And our first elephant, the name is uh, Musina. <laughs> Yeah, Musina, she was named after a town north of the country. And you know Musina town? Yeah. yeah across Melbourne border. And yeah. she is a fantastic elephant, absolute born leader. And for her age, uh, she can stay behind the elephants. She can walk in front. She can walk on her own. She's fine. And we suspect probably her grandmother or her mother at some stage was a matriarch. And you know what a matriarch is? The leader of the herd. Like she said, absolutely correct. Absolutely right. Like she said, most in the world, I should be really good. So now you tell you, Musina, you are beautiful. Musina, are you? Are you beautiful? There you go, girl. You are so clever. She went in like this, and we can pull the tree from the top section slowly, slowly. Yes. And, and Musina here, Bella next door. It's the first time. Uh, Bella, she was born in captivity. Uh, she was born in our cave. There we go, a few more. And I give you a few more. There we go, girl. Yes, yeah, so clever. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Christina. 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 Our elephant Musina to pick my cap and give to any of you by connecting to your names. Debbie. Okay, Musina, see move the camp. Remember, Debbie. Debbie. Oh. Yeah. Where's Christina, Musina? Oh. Elephants. If you can swap, if you can swap, yeah, you're still in the game, mate. Okay, that you do. And now, may I have a shoe each from you, please? I just want you will do. Just a shoe from you, please, man. Just one shoe. Thank you very much. So now I will demonstrate to you how quick I bear the just a few can be. So I don't know. It's a bit unlucky. I'm joking. So I'm going to ask you to pick the shoe and socks and find a direct owner by connecting to the set. So the command now is going to be pick it up. Who is it? Simuza and Yani. Musina go for it. Simuza again. Musina and Yani. Is that yours? <laughs> it's getting clever. Very clever. An idea about the memory. So the first in 2016. And Bella in Italian means beautiful. Bellissima. And also a local town called Bella Bella. And the one you drove past. And Zambezi, uh, he was born on the 4th of October in 2015. And he was named after Zambezi River, north of Zimbabwe. It was the owner's favorite place. Uh, so we named him Zambezi in the memory of the owner. Can, can't you do that? Let me go for the choice of When they lie down, it is more vulnerable because for them to get up the feet again, it's quite an effort. It's up to five seconds. And in Pala, for example, we will be a hundred meters away. So they normally, I prefer to sleep against a big tree or a tamer tomorrow. And either way, when there's a possible danger, they are easily on the feet and they can skate. I've done for us, Gilly. Here you are, beautiful. Well done, Gilly. Thank you. Beautiful. Fantastic. Oh, damn, Gini. Yeah, girl. I'm going to show you the chover. I can do the mouth with chover. I can show you the teeth. Yeah. With chover. Yeah, so now. Hello. 
Hello. We're here at Bella Bella today, walking with the elephant. Wow, it's a incredible experience. It feels like being in a documentary about elephants. But you're not watching it, you're in it. They're just doing their thing and we're going for a walk with them. <laughs> Breaking down the tree. Oh. oh.
incredible experience seeing elephants in their natural place, doing their thing, playing in the mud, breaking trees, eating all the time. Truly really special place.